The DJI Air 3S looks to be the perfect drone for new or enthusiast pilots, but we're not gonna buy one, and here's why. DJI just announced the new Air 3S when the original is only about a year old. It kind of feels like they're becoming more like Apple in their release cycle. This drone promises better low light performance over its predecessor, a one inch sensor, and advanced tracking capabilities. These are all pretty cool features for a mid-range drone, but before we get into the cool stuff, we have to take a walk down memory lane and look back at the DJI Air series and understand where we're at as of today. Originally launched in 2018, the Mavic Air featured a smaller, more compact design to offer consumers a more affordable alternative to the Mavic Pro and a likely ride on Apple's lightweight and cheaper but just as capable Air brand momentum. Think of the Air as about 80% of the Pro series. In 2020, the Air 2 was launched and the design was more of a scaled down version of the Mavic 2 Pro with folding arms and a top mounted battery. The camera was upgraded to support HDR and 10 bit color, but it was likely again reusing parts and features from the original Mavic Pro. Compared to the Mavic Pro and the more expensive but outgoing Mavic 2 Pro, the Air 2 had a fixed aperture lens, which meant that the pilots would have to manually change out ND filters if there was dynamic lighting situations. This was a big difference from the Pro series, which had a variable aperture lens, which would let you adjust the exposure control on the fly. In the summer of 2021, DJI dropped the Mavic branding from any but the top end actual Mavic series drones and updated the Air with an S for sensor or speed or second iteration? I don't know. The Air 2S followed a similar fashion to the Air 2 by taking parts from the previous Mavic 2 Pro and took the one inch sensor, this time from the Mavic 2 Pro, mixing it with a smaller frame, new software, new smart flight features, and they bumped the resolution from 4K up to 5.4K. Now, before we go further into the Air series with the 3, we need to stop and talk about the Mavic 3 as it provides some context to DJI's product offering in the Air lineup as we continue. In the fall of 2021, after three years, the DJI Mavic 3 was launched, which featured now two discrete cameras in a DJI drone for the first time with a 144 millimeter equivalent telephoto lens and a 24 millimeter wide angle lens. The main sensor was increased to four thirds size, which was about 35% larger than the previous one inch sensor, allowing for a big improvement in low light capability and the ability with the second camera to switch focal lengths on the fly. Now, personally, having flown the Mavic 3 in quite a few commercial jobs, the original Mavic 3 in 2021 suffered from some optical quality issues on the telephoto long lens, as much of the footage really turned out soft and unusable, unless you're looking for that 80s Michael Mann inspired aerial vibe. Originally, the Mavic 3 launched starting at a price of 2,049 US dollars in 2021. As a follow-up in 2022, again on the Mavic series, DJI launched the Mavic 3 Classic, which was a watered down version of the OG Mavic 3, but now with only one camera, the 4 3rd sensor at 24 millimeters. Basically, DJI released a simple Mavic 3 to slot between the Air 2S and the dual lens original Mavic 3. The Classic came in at the same 895 grams, so there wasn't really any weight savings either compared to the original Mavic 3. It was priced in 2023, at $15.99 with a basic RCN1, and you can actually still buy it today, but now at a lower price point of $11.59 US dollars. If you think about it though, back in 2023, the Mavic 3 Classic could have easily been offered as an Air 3 based on their past release strategy and technical specs. However, because it weighs almost 900 grams, it wouldn't have been a lightweight drone and it wouldn't have fit into that middleweight boxer category that the Air series has become known to be for. So in the perpetual onward march of consumerism, DJI has now released the entire new Air 3 in the fall of 2023, which is now again, a watered down version of the Mavic 3, but with a pretty hefty weight penalty. The new Air 3 had consumed a bit too much turkey, just like me over the weekend, and ballooned from 595 grams up to almost a three quarters of a kilogram at 720 grams. What was the cause for the weight gain aside from the sheer gluttony of stuffing and mashed potatoes? Well, now that it's got a second camera, just like the original Mavic 3. It didn't really happen without sacrifice or as expected. DJI replaced the original one inch sensor in the Air 2S 
with a new but smaller 1 over 1.3 inch sensor in a double helping with a stacked backside illumination, which meant that there was a significant improvement in low light coming close actually to the Mavic 3's larger sensor. So the dual camera stack featured the same 24 mil wide angle length and now the 70 millimeter length in the mid telephoto that was found on the Mavic 3 Pro. Maximum video resolution dropped from 5.4K down to 4K, but frame rates went up to 104K and 200 frames per second in 1080p on both lenses. Compared to the Air 2S, flight time was increased by nearly 15 minutes, software and obstacle avoidance were improved, and omnidirectional vision was featured for the first time in the Air series. What wasn't changed though, was the fact that both cameras still featured fixed aperture lenses meaning you still needed to swap out ND filters. And in some constellation though, the aperture was increased from f2.8 to 1.7, which meant better performance in low light situations. So just before the shopping season of 2024 really kicks off and the winter vacation season, here comes the DJI Air 3S. First off, what's new about this drone compared to the last one? Well, I'm pretty sure the S in this case stands for sensor as we're back. We've got the beloved one inch sensor back on the Air Series drone back in the small foldable, but only on the wide angle sensor. A bigger sensor means better low light performance, bigger pixel counts, and better ISO performance with less image noise in the dark. How does this version differ from the last version? Well, the drone weighs about the same as before, only four grams heavier now at 724 grams. Flight time is one minute less at only 45, again, in ideal conditions. Onboard storage has been increased to 42 gigs, meaning that you can actually get a few minutes of video in if you forget your memory card. The wide angle camera features what's now marketed as a 50 megapixel sensor compared to the 48 megapixel sensor on the last one. In my opinion, the physical sensor is likely still closer to 12 megapixels and uses software and burst shooting to stack multiple images together to get that higher resolution. However, because of the bigger sensor, ISO sensitivity has bumped from 6,400 to 12,800 in normal color and D-Log and HLG both go up now to 3,200 ISO instead of 1600. Dynamic range is claimed at a whopping 14 stops, but only in auto mode and only in a simplified color circumstances. Video frame rates have been bumped again to 120 frames a second in 4K and 240 in 1080p, again on both cameras. Video bitrate is down slightly from 150 to 130 megabits, but that could be a result of better compression technology, so you're gonna use a little less space. Image quality is probably about the same. Big change though in obstacle avoidance, it's been improved with the addition of a forward facing LiDAR sensor, which claims to allow the drone to confidently fly through trees while tracking a subject especially in low light where the camera based vision is just not gonna work that well. One of the main standout features that sounds pretty exciting is the fact that the drone creates its own real time map and point cloud, likely using the LiDAR and the vision system to allow the drone to know where it is, where obstacles are, and to be able to return to home without even having a GPS location fix. As you can probably tell, the biggest changes the Air 3S are gonna to bring to the table are gonna be best experienced at night. The increased ISO and dynamic range, the LiDAR sensor working in low light conditions, and the bigger sensor are all in a compact package that make the Air 3S ideal for someone who wants to fly a lightweight drone in suboptimal lighting conditions. Speaking of night, if you're into flying at night, we've got a whole podcast that dives deep into what you need to be aware of and how to fly safely. Check it out below if you're interested. Real question, are we gonna pick up an Air 3S? No. Not at this point. For starters, if you don't own a drone right now, and to qualify this, the Air 3S offers some compelling features that would make it an all-in-one best bang for the buck, and I would happily recommend it to you shopping for a new drone today. If you're already a DJI user, and you have some other drones in your fleet, especially if you're a Mavic, or you're already an Air user, this drone might be a bit of a hard sell for you. In our fleet, we have the original Mavic 3, the Mini 3 Pro as well, which both really offer similar image quality as the Air 3S in about 90% of the lighting situations that we shoot in, which is daylight and then a bit of dusk. The Mavic 3 has excellent low light capability thanks to its 20 megapixel four third sensor. And the Mini 3 Pro offers that sub 250 gram portability we need when traveling. The only thing that we don't have that the Air 3 and Air 3S offer at this point is that 70 mil 3X mid telephoto lens. But the reality is that we're holding out for what's likely gonna be the Mavic 4 probably next year. We've also got to be careful here. 
about getting into the gear acquisition syndrome hype vortex, as new gear doesn't always mean better photos. The reality is that 80% of the population use about 20% of the features of any piece of technology. There's always gonna be room for improvement or mastery in your existing tools. As a general rule of thumb, it's always a good idea to have the right tools for the job, but there comes a point where owning too much gear becomes a hindrance to your professionalism. The less time and energy you spend thinking about what drone to bring to the job, the more time you're gonna have to spend on actually improving your flight skills. So really, that's where we stand on the Air 3S. Objectively, it is a better drone than its predecessor, but it comes at a cost that we can't justify since we already own a bunch of drones in our fleet that are just almost as good. The original Air 3 gives you almost all of the features that the Air 3S has and comes in at least $200 cheaper. And with the holidays right around the corner, we wouldn't be surprised if we're gonna see a sale or some sort of price drop on the existing Air 3. So even in the next couple of years, the original Air 3 is still gonna hold its own and still be more than enough for most enthusiast pilots. But if you find yourself in low light conditions and you need that extra boost, then maybe the Air 3S might be the option for you. I'm not telling you not to buy it, but I'm telling you that we're not buying it. So let us know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching everyone. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit up that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time.